Hey, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few moments to tell you about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is a collection of short stories written by different authors. It is called Being Ace, and it's edited by Madeline Dyer. This is a collection of 14 stories. Some of them were written by authors that I've heard of before. Some of them were new authors to me. I think in reflection of that, some of them are authors who have published other books. Some of them are new authors who are just getting published. And the stories really span across genre. There's fantasy, there's sci-fi, there's realistic fiction. Each story does include a character who is asexual. And each story is written by someone who is also ace. This compilation is really unique and important in that there are not that many young adult books out there, books in general, with asexual characters. And representation, as we know, is really important in books. There's an introduction in this book written by Cody Daigle Orions, who is known as Ace Dad. I'm going to share a little bit with you because I think it conveys really well what this collection of stories does. He says, 16-year-old me didn't have any access to depictions of asexual lives. A book like the one you hold in your hands was something teenage me in the mid-1990s couldn't ever have imagined. Seeing ourselves depicted in stories, be they films, television shows, or books like these is one of the most powerful ways we come to understand ourselves. Depiction shows us we have a place in the world. It proves someone like us, someone with our experiences and thoughts and feelings can live, dream, act, and occupy space. And it proves we can do those things as ourselves without hiding, without denying our truths. Depiction says we can be anything. A villain, a hero, a wisecracking sidekick, a caring best friend, a curious adventurer, an ordinary someone, a being of impossible magic, we are bound only by what we can imagine ourselves to be. Depiction is a powerful magic, but this book enacts an even deeper kind, representation. It's one thing to see ace characters depicted in stories. It's another to have ace writers writing these stories. Representation is depiction in the hands of those needing to be depicted. It takes the magic of depiction further. Representation says, you deserve more than just the ability to see yourself in the story. You deserve to tell that story. And that is exactly what this collection of stories does. And because it is this collection of 14 different voices, that representation comes out in many different ways, which then underscores the many different ways that someone can be asexual, how that means different things for different people. One of the biggest pieces that I feel this whole collection conveys really well is how misunderstood ace folks are. Repeated again and again in stories, characters were told, you just haven't met the right person, or they just talked deeply about how wrong they felt, how society had made them feel wrong for not having certain feelings. And in these stories, they were allowed to flip that narrative on its head and center these stories around people like themselves, but also give power and agency to asexual people. The first story in this book is called How to Love a Sidewinder by Kat Yoon. A lot of the story centers on the importance of finding the main character who's a girl, someone to marry, and how difficult it is for that character to tell their mother that that is not something that they ever see themselves doing. But the story is a really hopeful story and the mother and daughter connect in a really wonderful way. And the daughter finds out what happens when she just tells her mother honestly why she feels what she really feels and why she feels she can't get married to a man or anyone at all. The next story was one of my favorites. It was called Across the Stars by Akimi Don Bowman. And this story has a main character who lives in this new different world that is in space. Everybody lives on different asteroids and they have lost their parents. They lost their parents when they were 13 years old. So they're sort of navigating the world on their own. They're scared to leave their particular space to get what they need to fix this bot that is very important in their lives. But they realize they have to do this and they have this voice that they think is this bot that provides customer service, but it turns out it's a person on the other end guiding them. And it just shows how 
people can connect in different ways. This is this is a connection that's just happening through voices and how much these characters are able to share with each other about common feelings that they have. I don't want to spoil, but I love the ending of this story. It built this whole world and really felt like you were placed there, even though it was something unimaginable and futuristic. And then when it ends, you're just left with this really heartwarming feeling, which is one of the ways that you see the authors of this story empowering their characters. They're being heard, they're being loved, and they're being cared for. The stories in this book also show how love can mean so many different things. And love does not have to be a romantic relationship between two people or a sexual relationship between two people. Nobody has to tell you what kind of love or relationship that's filled with love is more important in your life or what it should look like. And sometimes platonic love can be more powerful and equally as important as romantic love or other relationships that involve love. There are some stories that really give the main characters, the asexual characters, actual powers. There's a story called Giving Up the Ghost by Lindsay Miller. The main character is a guide between the spirit world that happens in a graveyard and the people who live in the town where this graveyard is who want to be able to come in and talk to the people that they lost in the graveyard. And there are certain rules about when you can go into the graveyard if you are a living person and when you can leave the graveyard. And if you don't follow those rules, how you will be enticed into this sort of world between the graveyard and the real world. You'll be trapped there forever as sort of this non-dead, non-living person who haunts people. And part of that, that haunting, and there are other stories that also have the same idea. The haunting reaches the people who are being haunted in a way that it pulls them in or stirs desire in them. They can't help but be reeled in by the ghost or, you know, it might be a goblin who is pulling in these people because they feel some desire. And so here there can be this character who doesn't feel that kind of attraction to people. And so they are powerful in a way that other people are not because they will not be taken in or haunted by whoever is doing the haunting. And therefore they can be a guide or they can be of service. They can come in and save the day in the way that people who are not asexual can't do. Uh, another story that reflects that is the last story called The Witch of Festa Falls by S.J. Taylor. And this is a story that takes place in 1730 in Norway. And so it's sort of based on Norse mythology. And in the story, teenage girls are, are being enticed into these woods by this music. There's a troll called a Fossagrim that lives in a waterfall that is playing this music and pulling these girls in. That music draws them in and brings them close to this troll who is an extremely attractive and they can't help but desire him. And this is a way that they get stolen. This is happening to girls in the town, except for our main character who's asexual is not going to succumb to that. And so she is able to go in to the woods and talk to this fossil grim and really take control of the situation and save her town because of her power, the power that is given to her through being asexual. There's a story called Smells Like Teen Virgin by S.E. Anderson. The main character comes from a family of slayers. They slay vampires and werewolves and other monsters like that. It's what they're born to do. When they are in their teenage years, there's this initiation that has to happen. And if they haven't lost their virginity, if they're still pure, then they will attract more vampires. In this case, it's harmful for the main character and for the people around her, for her to still be a virgin because she is exuding this purity and she's attracting these monsters. But then when she starts to dig a little deeper into why this is, she realizes that it doesn't have to be this way. This is just what has been told to people and has always been assume that this is the thing that has to happen to fix this situation. And that aligns with all of the stories in this collection and another thing that this collection is doing in general, which is telling us that one of the reasons we don't see stories with ace characters by ace people is that the general narrative in our society is not one that 
supports asexuality or believes that people do not have sexual desires or romantic desires because that is what is told to everybody is the norm and it's everywhere and it's what you hear from an early age and so that's why it is so so important to have stories like these being published and why we are so lucky to have this collection being ace that madeline dyer has put together I really recommend that you read these stories. They're eye-opening, they're entertaining, they're funny, they're sad, they're everything. There's a genre in there for any kind of reader. So give it a try. Again, that's Being Ace, edited by Madeline Dyer. Thank you for joining me.